Rothwild's got a stubborn reputation. I doubt asking nicely is going to work. We'll have to find a more persuasive means of getting what you want out to... of him. He's probably close to his office. We should start there. Nice. Just go get rid of that. Ugh. Yoink. So I am having to replay this. Um, my recording messed up a little bit, which it'll be a common theme. I had to replay through the jail mission and I kept in like the start of this mission because it wasn't that long. I just cut some of it out. Um, but I decided to re-record this mission because oh, it's, it's a decent little mission and I'm, I don't mind replaying bits of Dishonored. It's fine. Not like I haven't already played it like ten times. Marked for shipment to the most distant point of the Empire. And fitted for live cargo too. Survivable. If they had a fast ship. I wonder who this was meant for. You lock somebody up in that thing and they won't be back in town for months. The only difference is I no longer have Summon Assassin. Because I restarted the whole mission. So I didn't buy Summon Assassin. I'm gonna get... Um, Void Gaze level 2. Because Void Gaze level 2 is pretty good. Well, he did look scared. I think. Just at the end. Yeah. It highlights stuff, which is sick. Who did I just alert there? <clears throat> I really wanted to just kill someone. <laughs> really wanted to kill someone. Where do you go? Surprise. What you man? You come. What do those idiots want anyway? Well done. Well, they think they don't get the rest of you cared off. Because they can get fired for refusing to do dangerous work. <laughs> We're doing this a lot smoother than the first time I played. <laughs> I definitely had already killed all of these people on my last playthrough, and I wish I could show you it, but the audio is really bad. You might hear it in some of the footage that I've left in for the first episode and part of this. Um, is this going to be in the first episode? Maybe this is going to be in the first episode. I can't remember. I don't recall. But it was just very, like, staticky. I'm hoping it's not much in the first episode. God. Is. A makeshift interrogation chair. Rothwild must be using it to coerce employees. Yeah, to get petitions so that they don't unionize against him. It's not ideal. Let me just go ahead and save my game real quick. So it's starting at last, Admiral. We've found our man. Even after six months and... We can continue this later, Lord Pendleton. The man of the hour is here. Corvo, I'm Admiral Havelock. A true now that's of more Empire, fucking Steve like Buscemi. I know those eyes. Those of us who wouldn't recognize his claim You're not fooling me. And I'm Lord Trevor Pendleton. I represent the nobility in our little group. But we all act as equals here at the Hound Pits pub. This is a momentous occasion, Corvo. I'm going to come out with it. We've been building a coalition of loyalists. Aimed at ending the Lord Regent's tyranny and restoring the throne. At risk of execution, we're committed to finding young Lady Emily and seeing her crowned as Empress. We've got big plans, but we can't do any of it without you. We need your skills, your ability in a fight, and in helping us, we're going to help you destroy the men who murdered the Empress. Sorry, you must be exhausted. We can discuss this further after you've recovered, but before you retire, you should introduce yourself to Piero. He's challenging at times, but his industrious mind buys him that right. Yes, Piero's as much an artist as a technician. He's going to be crafting... Now, you're going to have to prepare Go yourself to because to multiple himself. times throughout this playthrough, I am going to be singing Piero's Miracle Elixir uh, because I really like Sweeney Todd and it sounds like uh, Pirelli. 
so suck my dick. I'm probably never gonna say it now that I've said that actually. Um, so it's a win-win really. I say it and I get some enjoyment out of it, or I don't say it and you get to avoid me saying it. I will create the tools of a master assassin. Mm-hmm. No! This cannot happen now. The tank of whale oil's run out. Will you get a new tank from upstairs, please, while I hold this in place? Be careful. The oil's unstable. When it explodes, there's a terrible mess. Go take this back downstairs for Piero. Perfect. Now plug it in. Perfect. Thank you, Carl. Here, see? The Assassin's Mask. You're a wanted man, so everyone in the city knows your face. But this mask will mean terror to them. If you just hold still, the fit must be precise. There. Can you see normally? Send the lens out of alignment. There. Better now? I could create more for you. Upgrades for your gear, weapons, munitions. But our situation here is desperate. Scavenge the city for valuables, and I will resell them on the black market. That should give us the money to craft the things you need. Tell me what I can make for you. God, that was intense. <laughs> Tell me what I can make for you. Let me have a look. Let me have a gander. Give me them, obviously. That's it. That's all I can afford. Sorry, Piero. You must be exhausted. I advise that you get some sleep. Your life will get even more difficult soon. You should rest while you can. Sleep well. How much does he know by now? Ramsey? No, this is about the workers. This is about fair pay and safe conditions. Don't bother. You're not the first of his moles I've caught. Ooh. What happened? You? It's me. Well, Dowd, what do you want with me? I'm not here for you. I'm here to learn about a ship called the Delilah. Did the Lord Regent send you? That old fool, Hiram Burroughs. I know all about the Delilah. All of it. And I can give you exactly what you want. Please do. Not so fast. I need something from you in exchange. That's what I thought. What? We're both professionals, Mr. Dowd. I was hired to get these gutless workers striking, which I did very nicely. And then destroy the slaughterhouse itself. That's where I got caught. And that's where I need your help. How? The whale oil in those tanks out there is enough to destroy this entire place. The important industrial bits, especially. Just open all the valves at once to let the oil start flowing. The pressure will go out of control and... Boom. What about the people inside? Growing a conscience? The factory workers are already out. My boss will hire them on, in better conditions than they'd ever see here. Not the butchers, though. They can die screaming for all I care. No. Don't try and come. <laughs> Doubt's Wouldn't turning over a new leaf. We're not mass key. murdering. Don't get caught. You take care of the slaughterhouse. We're kind of running with the concept that for some reason the, the Empress was you know, different for Dowd. I could put you in Rothwild's interrogation chair myself. Why should I bargain with you? Because it's a long and messy solution. And I'm gambling you're not the kind of man who likes that. Make a deal with me. And I can tell you what you want, and pay you for your trouble. I'll consider it. Hmm. Well, I've considered it. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't fully know why the Empress, like, affects Dowd specifically so much. Uh, what I'm gonna do is, we're gonna take, I guess we'll take her down, stick her in the thing, 
and maybe stick old fella in oh shit Ooh. Ooh. stick old fella in the tub oh. Oh god! Oh. Bloody hell's bells. So I stuck Rothwild in on my other attempt. So I kind of want to see what she says instead. I think she'll probably fold quite fast. I don't think she'll hold out for too much to yeah, for too long. She's just as bad as him. I'll make sure you get to enjoy this. I don't, I'm not going to enjoy it, because, I mean, she's not outrightly a dickhead. She's just being a dickhead by wanting to blow up the entire fucking place with everyone in. Maybe we can interrogate both of them. Where am I? Oh. I think you know where you are. I've seen this thing used. I know how to resist it. Well... Resist, I guess. That was worse than I thought it would be. Tell me about <laughs> oh, oh, I don't know why I laughed at that. <laughs> or leave oh, I made me sound nervous a bit there. What's the matter? Didn't think I could stand up to you? I need to know the significance of Delilah. You should have asked Rothwild when you had the chance. Listen, this is what they told me. There was supposed to be a plan. They said Rothwild was diverting 10% of the oil he harvested, cheating the Lord Regent of the product. But he wasn't doing it alone. He had a partner who sold him the ship, the Delilah. Who is his partner? And why did he name it Delilah? Barrister Arnold Timsch. Why do you want to know this? You don't care about the oil at all, do you? This is about the name. Tell me about it's always Delilah. about the names. She's the real story. Delilah used to be a kitchen apprentice in the Empress's court. At Dunwall Tower. But she got sacked for something. Later, Sokolov spotted her talent as a painter and made her part of his circle. She met Timch and enthralled him. An old bastard like that, he was helpless. He named the ship for her. She took him for all he had. Almost. But it ended. How? Why? Delilah had some kind of hold on him. They said he was obsessed, then terrified. No one knows why. I hope that was satisfying. Here. I found the room key. When you're ready to go, I guess we're done here. Okay, I'll sick. I'll you outside. Leave me be. Yeah, I'll let you and uh, Rothwild finish your little tit for tat. God, I do feel like a bit of a dickhead because I did stuff him in the crate in the other one. And on this one, I'm kind of just leaving her. I wonder if I can go back and get his body and stuff him in the crate still. I kind of want to try. And if it was a waste of time, I'll cut it out. <laughs> but, oh shit, where am I? Oh no, <laughs> I've, I've blinked. Down here! Shit! I didn't mean to do that. I accidentally slipped. Sup? I don't know why I was bringing him here. I got a little bit confused for a moment, sorry. <laughs> I forgot where we were taking him. And brought him back here. Oh shit! They weren't here before. Oh, there we go. Nice. Love choke dust. Choke dust is cool. I just want to go non-lethal. I don't particularly care if they know that I'm here. I just want to make sure that it's all non-lethal. I don't know if, like, if it's canon that Dowd operates on, like, a purely kill everyone basis outside of the DLC. 
Oh, you can't throw him in there. Well, we'll just pretend. We'll just have to roleplay it, I guess. <laughs> oh, we chose the naff option. Right, we're going out the front door, though. This is a public warning. Corvo Atano, the assassin and one-time royal protector, has escaped from confinement. He has. Large within the city. Oh. Any sightings of this state criminal must Where be reported I? to the city watch at once. God, they're waking each other up. Under conditions, failure to report for work at industries deemed vital to state interests has been declared treasonous by the Lord Regent. We're not done yet, a second. That might be worth checking out. Heard something. Guards, come in! Oh! Whiskey for a week if you kill him! Oh, shit! Oh, fuck. Come on, bleed! Fiddlesticks. Take it! Billy, are you okay? <laughs> Holy shit. I wasn't expecting there to be three of them, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't remember that. <laughs> I knew they were there, wasn't expecting three. Thank you. Let's go. I'm worried they sent for the hounds. Missing or damaged time card will no longer be replaced due to abuse of this indulgence. Any worker without a time card will be denied admission to the company and summarily terminated. Should we gather whiskey and cigars tonight? Bloody Indeed. whiskey and cigars. I believe so. A pleasure to watch you work. Feels like there's always more to learn about pain. Barrister Tim lives up in the legal district. I know it pretty well. From what I hear, the Timsch family is practically at war with itself. Talk to his niece Tali if you can. I should probably tag along when you go. Crazy rich people are buying up a lot of that Sokolov security technology these days. Keeps the weepers and looters out. I might be useful. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Hello, Corvo. Your life has taken a turn, has it not? The Empress is dead, her precious daughter Emily is lost somewhere in the city, and you will play a pivotal role in the days to come. For this I have chosen you, and drawn you into the void. I am the Outsider, and this is my mark. There are forces in the world and beyond the world, great forces that men call magic. And now, these forces will serve your will. Use this newfound power. My gift to you. You're so generous. Come find me. He's like, bitch, let's play hide and seek. So Corvo's version of Blink is not as cool as Dowd's, but it's fine. It's fine. It's going to be uh, possibly challenging bouncing between the two, because I'm going to keep expecting time to freeze, but... Corvo, I am very sad. They say that you're dead like mother, but I'm going to put this note in a bottle and throw it into the river, because I do not believe them. Living here is very strange. I do not like it, so please come for me if you can.
Oh. And look, so gloves missing. I've got a map of um, Karnaka from the second game, and it's it's on my living room wall. <laughs> um, I got it a while back when I used to collect Dishonored stuff, years, years, and years ago. It was the only thing that I never got rid of. I'd like to start again, to be fair. I used to have like the limited edition Corvo mask and a bunch of Funko Pops, so I'd like to get that stuff back because they were really sick. Maybe even some replica stuff would be nice. Like a heart, for example, that would be sick. Will be great, Corvo. Oh, the joys of Etsy. The ancient runes bearing my mark in the lonely places of your world, and at shrines raised in my name. These runes will grant you powers beyond those of other men. To help you find these runes, I give you this. The heart of a living thing, molded by my hands. With this heart, you will hear many secrets, and it will guide you toward my runes, no matter how they may be hidden. Listen to the heart now, and find another rune. So of course that's the Empress's heart. This Intense. Equipping the heart in your left hand helps you locate bone charms or runes. This is the end of all things, and the beginning. So she's going to give insight to certain characters, to certain locations. All of time is meaningless here. Neither seconds, nor centuries. So I guess a little bit of clarification on where we are. I don't... I guess, well, we're in the void, aren't we? Which, um, the place where the outsider dwells. Which she's now clarifying, I guess, that it's it's outside of everything else. It's like outside of the universe. Which is pretty sick. How do I get down there? The amount of times I've played this game and I got very confused then. So let's go ahead and buy Dark Vision, which Dowd already has. But we're going to have slightly different variations of it. What I have given you falls upon you, as it has to the others before you. And now I return you to your world. But know that I will be watching with great interest. I'm sure you will. Okay, so bone charms are gonna act. Oh, oh, slackjaw. Um, bone charms are gonna act a little bit more like. Um, I'd say runes are like skills, and bone charms are like perks, if that makes sense. Field survey notes: the royal spy. Excerpt from the personal memoirs of Hiram Burrows, dated several years earlier. Empress does not seem pleased with my investigations. Against her very nature as a trusting person to believe that traitors move among us. But I know they do. They must. Young lady Emily is undisciplined, I'm afraid. Here within Dunwall Tower, she receives instruction from the finest tutors known in the Isles, yet her mother spoils her and she spends most of her time lost in imagination, wasting her time drawing or asking Corvo to teach her to fight with wooden sticks. The girl might rule the Empire someday. Every moment spent at play is a moment wasted. 
So he, yeah, he's completely against. The Empress also disapproves of my plans for the Sokolov devices. Sokolov himself has no interest in security, of course, but he's vain and therefore keen to see his inventions deployed in any fashion. This wall of light he's been tinkering uh, with has promise. In any case, at least I was able to convince the Empress to upgrade the pistols carried by the officers of the Watch. See, I was curious about that because of the blue pulsing light I'd never noticed. Um, so they're powered by Sokolov's elixir. Why do I worry so when no one else seems to care? If I ever fall asleep, will it all sink into the ocean? Will the rough things clamber over the walls and fill themselves of our, uh, on our flesh? Oh, this is what I see in the same dream several times each month. If only I had more say in things, more authority, I could protect us all. So the Royal Spymaster, a little bit of his... I guess motivation, because he's having these dreams or visions of Dunwall getting overwhelmed by weepers. The Journal of Granny Rags. That's going to be a good one. Let's see what else we've got first. What's this one? Rumours and sightings of Dowd. Let's do the Slackjaw one first, because he's going to be cropping up pretty soon. So, uh, from a series of letters sent by a member of the Bottle Street Gang. You want the chin wag on Slackjaw? What he was like when he was young, before he got his name? Oh, he's got a cool head now, but it weren't always like that in the days before he was boss of the Bottle Street Gang. Time was, young Slackjaw wasn't such a reasonable man. Uh, weren't little young'uns, Slackjaw was one to watch, usually calling the shots when we took down a farmer's cart or sidewalk street vendor. Uh, so much to do with uh, Mike the fish guy, I don't care too much about Slackjaw. <laughs> I care a lot about Granny Rags and Dowd though, because they bear the mark. The ramblings of a street denizen. Of course I'll tell you, dearie. I won't keep any secrets from you in the end. So this is actually the the actual j a journal of Granny Rags. This is all DLC stuff, by the way. It doesn't really fit well into, like, why Corvo now has it. It's just fun little lore stuff. Um, so let's see. The front room looks out into the street where the neighbours are all setting fire to their homes, barricading themselves inside, warm and snug. Don't forget about the bedroom either. It seems... Uh, it sees into a dreary alley where hooligans are playing a game with an old man. The first two are hitting him with sticks and the girl with them is kicking at his dry old ribs. Oh, to have those bones to boil them in a pot. No one lives in my house anymore. No one you'd want to meet. Uh, when I lived there with my husband, we were fine, fine people. Vera Murray, everyone would say. Your house is as grand as Boyle Manor. Better even, your dinners are lavish and your parties are the best. When that young Sokolov came to paint my portrait, I was nearly still in my prime. Radiant, he said, and he was just barely a man. So young, painting all the best people across the land. Everyone wanted a portrait by his hand, all my friends. I was the only one, wet with his paint, glistening on the canvas for a pretty coin. Oh, look at this, okay. But it wasn't all parties and paintings. My husband and I weren't always at home. No, we travelled together, he and I, to the far ends of the Isles. Beyond even, all the way to the red cliffs of Pandicia. To dig in the rock and crawl through the caves, holding up candles and squinting at the walls. Many precious things we came upon, but none so precious as the boy with the black eyes. All those marks and bones carved so deep and polished so bright. I brought the old bones home, hid them from my dear husband. Then I learned to boil them and carve them myself. They made such good presents. The little mute boy took them home. He loved them so. All the time he came back with new bones for me, holding them up so I could see it in his eyes, even though his tongue was still. Granny, his eyes would say to me, Carve these bones for me, make me another present. And he went so far, so far, all the way to Dunwall Tower. The royal headsman himself now, my little mute boy in his shiny, shiny sword. Better bones were what I needed, you see. 
Better bones to carve and polish, scrape and gleam. My dear old husband was always tired. I made him soup and then he was sick. Better bones was all. For my little mute boy carved in the name of the one with black eyes and after my husband was gone, given away as birthday gifts, I didn't want to live there anymore. So, Granny Rags, apparently an expert rune maker. <laughs> so now I'm old and don't have many to give my presents to. It's sifting through the garbage for Granny Rags and feeding the little birdies that gather at my feet. No one wants to have tea, especially those rude louts on Bottle Street. Slack Jor and his boys always meddling with an old woman just trying to make her way. In the end we'll be together with him, you and me in the dreary night with stars above and below. And always the one with the black eyes. So, I guess Granny Rags stumbled across the outsider in a cave. I would love to see that. I would love to see a cinematic of that. Holy shit. That would be terrifying. Like, um, if anyone's seen Midnight Mass, you know what scene I'm talking about. <laughs> So then we've got rumours and sightings of Dowd. Yes, we're reading all of them, because I love the lore of this game. For over a year now, I have lived away from the Abbey, without the company of my overseer, brethren, or the guidance of the blind sisters of the Oracular Order. Days have passed with me sleeping in the dens of cut purses, murderers, and worse, and the knights have seen me prowling through the worst alleys and wretched corners of Dunwall. I have taken my mills with killers. At times I have ventured beyond the city walls, meeting in forgotten graveyards and the outlying ruins frequented by those of ill means. My goal is singular. I must impress the assassin named Dowd in order to get close to him. Of all of the practitioners of black magic we have tracked, none concern the abbey as much as Dowd. It is said that his mother was a witch from one of the archipelagos? off the Pandician coast, taken captive by pirates venturing far from the isles. According to the legend, by the time the ship returned, the captain was dead and the witch controlled the crew, with Dowd still in her shadow, uh, uh, still a shadow in her belly. The earliest stories tell of a gang killer, without mercy, moving among uh, the shopkeepers and city watch officers of Dunwall like a reaper through wheat. Then a period of silence followed, Years, we now believe he spent travelling the Isles, studying anatomy and the occult in the great halls of learning and in hidden basements frequented by fellow dabblers in the forbidden arts. Dowd is even pur purported, this has got a lot of strange words, okay, uh, to have spent a winter in the Academy of Natural Philosophy itself, and for a time before a schism developed, he counted the Brigmore witches among his allies. All the while he honed his craft, and it is during this time that we believe he began to consort with the outsider. Only a month ago, one girl claims to have come upon a strange scene. Carrying a bottle of milk home to her crippled brother, she was taking a shortcut through the Taylor's district. In a narrow street, she passed beneath a window and heard unusual sounds from within. Pushing aside the ratty curtain, the girl saw into an abandoned apartment used by miscreants for gambling and trading hobbleweed. An occult shrine had been erected against the far wall, while she recognised from the teachings given by her local overseer. A man she described as resembling Dowd was kneeling before the shrine, muttering to an unseen spirit, as if in argument. He took a carving, made of pale bone, from the altar before him and the lights all went out in a gush of unclean wind. Quiet as a field mouse, she slipped away, running until she reached home. There can be no doubt, Dowd is an agent of the outsider and must die, for there is no limit to the evil this man might do. I will not drop my guise or don my overseer's mask again until Dowd breathes no more. God, they need to make a Dishonored TV show, don't they? I know that, like, everyone's very anti-TV show at the moment, I would absolutely kill for a Lies of P and a Dishonored TV show. I don't care. I want to see it. Suck my dick. Oh, I'm allowed to want what I want. And that's what I want. <laughs> if you like, but he won't use it. Why? He can't sleep in regular beds anymore. Or that's what he says. Says he was in the Navy too long. Can you believe it? Oh. That pile of wood out there? It's a hobble he built from an old rowboat. Where does Admiral Havelock find these people, I wonder? I'm not going to interrupt them. Well, 
Let's get down to it. First off, I know that assassination is dark business. But sometimes, good men have to do bad things to make the world right. Our purpose is clear. We want to restore Her Majesty's line by finding and putting Emily Caldwin on the throne. To those ends, we'll hide, act in shadow, take them apart, piece by piece. Tonight, High Overseer Campbell dies by your hand. It won't be easy. He's protected by his overseers, an army of religious zealots. But if anyone can do it, you can. Your exploits are legendary. Campbell carries a private journal. Once you've eliminated him, get the journal, because we think it contains Emily's location. Recovering her is obviously critical, assuming she's alive. That's the gist of it. Remember our cause and strike true. We're counting on you. Another thing. Campbell is holding a former overseer by the name of Martin. He's one of us, and if you manage to find him, give him whatever help you can. He's a master strategist, and he got caught working for our cause. It'd be good to have him back here at the Hound Pits. If you say so. Let's speak to Piero real quick, because uh, obviously we got some cash from the DLC bonuses we got. Piero's Door to Nowhere. The Door to Nowhere has proven to be a safety hazard, but for me this project is an endless source of inspiration. With the proper application of energies, I believe I can transform the door frame into a window of sorts. One that will allow a traveller to cover the distance from any workshop to some... From my workshop to some distant, arbitrary point in a single step. Currently, the step leads to a sheer drop straight down into the courtyard. But in time, it will bridge gaps that will boggle the mind. Such work is many years away, to be sure. But if I survive this plague, I'm sure to succeed. What can I do for you? I need some upgrades, Piero. So, what I would like is combat sleep dart. No, do I want that? I don't think I need that yet. Oh. Okay, we want mask optics. And I definitely want... That's only standard bolt upgrade, which is a bit naff. Let's get a bone charm capacity upgrade. Ooh. It's really naff that you can't get travel faster and further, crossbow aim, let's do that. It's really naff that you can't get an upgrade to the sleep darts just yet. I guess we'll buy the rune. And uh, I don't want a rewire tool, to be honest. I guess we'll buy those just in case we need them, and we'll save the rest. So, we can upgrade our vitality, but I'm going to wait until we can upgrade our agility instead. I don't think we're going to need to upgrade health, I'm not going to lie. I think we'll be fine because I'm going for stealth. Oh, Corvo. Oh. Corvo. Hello. I'm Callista. I work here for Admiral Havelock. I'm sorry to intrude on your business, but this is important. I suspect you're going to kill the High Overseer. That wretched man. There's really no reason for you to listen to me. But my uncle, Jeff Kernow, still serves as captain in the City Watch. But he's a good man, and my only family. The chatter in servant circles is that Campbell just took delivery of an exotic poison. And I think I know why. My uncle's not corruptible like the rest of them. Campbell is going to poison my uncle. Do you think you could protect him? You used to do that, right? Before you had your current profession. Before you became an assassin. I mean, we'll give it a go. I'll try my best. But no promises. 